I'm Rick Santorum. I'm a former United States Senator from the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. What you're seeing now is because we have seen a breakdown of trust in the system, the free market system isn't working. It isn't working because people no longer uh, trust uh, that what companies say is going on within their company is actually real. And when that happens, people don't lend money to them. People don't uh, you know, do business with them. People don't trust that the relationships that they have established are going to be fulfilled in the way that the people who are asserting uh, you know, will. And so you, I think what you're, instead of making the point that the free market system doesn't promote moral character, uh, by seeing all these scandals and seeing the breakdown of the free market system. What you're seeing is that the reason for the breakdown is because people have in fact abused that trust. That, that, that it's not to say that everybody involved in the free market system is going to be an honorable actor, is going, to be, is, is going to be moral. But what it shows is that if they aren't, not only do they fail and do they not succeed, but the system fails. And so uh, the lesson learned, in my opinion, out of this whole scandal is that businesses and, and, and our society needs to focus a lot more on these, these basic principles of honesty and integrity and, 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 and trust uh, to make sure that the free market system continues to work well for America. It's a great hope. Uh, you know, we, uh, I'll never forget after the events of 9-11, one of the things President Bush said was go out and spend money. Uh, here we are at a time we're being attacked, and I, I criticized him at the time for saying that. Uh, but is that what really this is about? Is it just you know the most important? Yes, we want to keep our economy going, and certainly that was the president's point. But it was also a time that you know we we have to look at sacrifice and service, and you know, we're we're engaged in a struggle here, and the struggle in this case was the war. Uh, the struggle now we're dealing with is trying to you know right the economy. But there's a larger struggle here, and that's the every every old every person's individual struggle with you know who are they and and what are they going to be and and how do they fit into this picture? And I think we need leaders who are you know frank with folks that life is about struggle. That uh, you know we've uh, we've sort of lost the uh, uh, the virtue of struggle and and struggle. If you look back in your own life, or you look back in the, uh, uh, the history of our country collectively, the times where America has been at its finest and where individuals are at its finest is, in fact, during those very difficult times. That's when, that's when you build character. That's when you find out the metal of the people and, and what this country really is all about. It's not in the good times. The good times can tend to be the most you know, immoral times and can be the most decadent times. And our times we look back and sort of, uh, you know, blush a little bit. You know, geez, you know, that was, uh, you know, we certainly the time of excess. Our founders in, in our founding document uh, have a phrase which hopefully most Americans know, uh, that we hold these truths to be self-evident. And we can go, well, all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That's, that's, a, that's a phrase that I was taught when I was a young kid. I don't know how often it is taught in the schools today. Uh, I would hope it would be taught and it would be dissected and understood. But the concept that w there was that you had people who believed in truth, that in fact you could discern truth, that there was in fact a right and a wrong, and that the person that laid out what was right and wrong was a deity, was God, uh, that there was a God, there was a creator, that we are part of his creation. And as a result, we have a moral obligation that he has dictated for us. That was the basic foundation of America. It was a Judeo-Christian ethic. It was a Judeo-Christian reasoning. It was, a, it was a merger of faith and reason uh, that, that gave us that we could not only have, div, have truth revealed to us divinely, but in fact, we could reason our way to the truth. And if it's the truth, by the way, it turns out to be the same, whether it's divinely revealed or reason. I wrote a book three or four years ago called It Takes a Family and spent most of uh, that book talking about the, the Founders' vision uh, and because I think this is a country that is still uh, based on that incredible uh, you know 
unique vision of our founders that has had such a huge impact on the world. Uh, we, need to, we need to continue to remember that you know, the freedom that we sought was not a freedom that, that our founders saw as license. Uh, the freedom to do whatever you wanted to do, irrespective of its impact on someone else. That was, if you'd have said that to Adams or Franklin or, or Jefferson, uh, they would have looked at you as if you were from, you know, I don't know where, because that, that concept was, was foreign to them. That's, that was not what freedom, freedom was the ability to be able to do what you ought to do without government telling you something that you knew was in your, in your heart and soul wrong.